current events of the year of our Lord 2004. And here we go. It is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Well, let, let me just read it to you, if I may. And you don't have to turn there because I'm only going to take one verse and then we're going to the meat. Verse 11 of 1 Corinthians 10 reads, Now, speaking of the Old Testament, all the things that have ever happened to our people. Now, all these things happened unto them for in samples. And they are written for our admonition, our warning, upon whom the ends of the world are come. You're supposed to take types and signs. You know, after all, there's nothing new under the sun, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Nothing new under the sun. It plays over and over. That that has been shall be again. Therefore, God, that's God's way of teaching that simplifies everything. All you have to do is look what happened before and pay attention and watch for signs that align with current events in your lifetime. And sooner or later, it's going to be that generation of the fig tree, which you are. It began in the year of our Lord, 1948. And you better pay attention because things are happening. And that's why I feel it's necessary that we open our Bibles to the fourth chapter of Daniel. Do you know who wrote the fourth chapter of Daniel? The king of Babylon did. Nebuchadnezzar himself. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar worshipped, uh, he called Baal the god of learning. And he, and he had huge libraries. He educated the, the Hebrew children. Well, I wanted, the first thing he wanted to do is educate him. And, uh, but all in all, he was only a type. Now, where is Babylon of today, geographically speaking, that if something was going to happen, you would want to be watching? The old city of Babylon lies, let me think now, 57 and a half approximately miles south of Baghdad. And as a matter of fact, much of the conflict that continues on is in the land of Babylon. Now, naturally, then we have rulers. And the old boy that considered himself to be the king of Babylon, I'll be the greatest, all right? I mean, the statues everywhere, pictures everywhere, cross swords, always holding the big rifle, bang, 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 you know. I mean... Brave man, right? Well, I think we kind of found out different, didn't we? You know, he so bragged on his sons. He said, I wish I had a thousand of them to give that way. When they, their dad's preaching caused them to fight, their dad didn't fight. Okay, He did not. But then the thing you want to milk from that are the signs. And in, in as much as the king of Babylon of old who later converted and wrote one of the most beautiful prayers in God's Word in this same fourth chapter. But we're going there first. There was a vision given from God as just how much God will take. You know, God will only take so much. It was like back in, in um, the garden. When they begin to reach out and try to make their own salvation, God's going to intercede. It was just like when they got together and began to build the Tower of of Babylon confusion we're not going to let a flood get us again we're going to find a way to crawl above all this and make us a tower right to heaven so we can be saved uh uh you're messing around with God's business big time when you start having dreams like that and God brought them all down split their languages and scattered the people big time getting too smart for their own good instead of listening to him so he gives these messages, and he kind of warns us ahead when things begin to bounce off of him in heaven. I'm going to tell you something. When it does, you better be ready, because he's going to do something about it. 
Let's see what that vision was that uh, God gave this warning. Chapter 4, verse 13, rightly divide the word of God. Again, I want you to know this is Nebuchadnezzar speaking of old, a type. And who is the final king of Babylon? It's Satan himself is the Antichrist, the false messiah. This happened so that you could tell how it was going down in your lifetime, the generation of the fig tree. Verse 13, chapter 4. And I saw in this vision of my head upon my head, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. Did what? Came down from heaven. That means a watcher is what? It's an angel. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit, and let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. In other words, you cut down, this happens to be the king of Babel in this tree. And this is God's uh, order concerning it. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Uh, okay. I mean, that's real earthy, getting right back where thing, the rubber meets the road. All right. 16. Listen to this closely. This is, applies to you today a lot closer than you might think. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. Now, ultimately, naturally, it would be seven dispensations. But when God gives us types, what about this so-called king of Babylon? I want to catch you up to speed here. This so-called king of Babylon stood in Baghdad until our tanks and our army began to enter. I'll give him that credit. He was riding around with one of his sons trying to get his troops to fight. He was a little bit late. A little bit late. And they were running. Okay. They, um, and, and right, they, you know, they, they didn't have a prayer. They had bought up all these old Russian tanks and stuff that was absolutely worthless until they owed Russia billions for junk. They bought Russia's junkyard thinking this is high class stuff. We be tank drivers. Okay. Anyway, as our troops entered in and pulled down that huge statue, that's a point that I know all of you can remember that, can't you? Of course you can. The day that that came down. He was on his way north when that statue came down. And he spent... Now, how do you regulate Satan's time in prophecy? It's always what? Months. Meaning what? Moons. Meaning what? Night signs. He... All his signs and prophecies concerning Satan are given in months. Forty-two months in Revelation chapter 13, okay? Not, not as he would for his children that believe when he says 1,260 days solar, children of the light, okay? So naturally, if you begin to judge a type on times, exactly seven months, seven times, when the statue went down, he came out of a hole in the ground. Okay? Just want to get that set for you so you understand how proper this prophecy is and how when your father gives you a sign from his word, you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. Seven moons. And we have a critter. And well, how was he given a beast's heart? I don't know what kind of beast does it take to cut people's tongues off in public. You know, what kind of beast does it take to have people bound with their hands behind them and shove them off of multi-story buildings? 
What kind of beast does it take to gas whole cities of innocent people, babies, mamas, daddies, anyone there, and you see a type set forth, and in seven months, we'll speak a little more about him coming out of that hole. That's also biblical, all right? But now, this was the vision first given by God. I don't want you to forget 1 Corinthians 11. These things, those things happen so that you can have a sign for admonition, warning, in the, at the end of the world. When you're getting, this lets you know just about how close you're getting, my friends. And um, it's a fantastic uh, prophecy. This was given to Neb this dream vision was given to Nebuchadnezzar himself. He's going to ask Daniel to interpret it, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, okay. Verse um, 17. Listen carefully. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, by the angels from God, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent or for this reason that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest of men. If he, basest meaning the lowest, if he chooses. He's ruling. What does that say to you? Well, it's the same thing we've known for years and years. God's in control. That's why we don't have to worry. When you're in him, and he's in you. You don't. If you have faith, what what are you sweating about? He's foretold you all things, just how it was going to go down, just how it was going to happen. And God smiles and laughs at the enemy, which means he's not the least bit worried about him. Why should you be? Okay, you don't have to worry about Satan. Um, and, and I think in a sense, when you see what type came out of that hole in the ground, I don't think that'd frighten anybody. I know what it does to an old combat marine, okay? You think it would frighten me? No way. You know, I, if anything, pity. You know, it's, it's a good thing it was this day. You know, he was very fortunate because you know, the, do you know what the... The stand, the SOP is on a situation like that. You call out and say, if anybody's in there, come out. And after about three times, do you know what standard operating procedure is? You pull the pin. <laughs> the pin on what? The hand grenade, and you drop it right down in there. So he come awake about the right time. <laughs> Just about. But anyway. Our Father intends us to take this very serious because you're living in it. You're experiencing it. And it is your warning. Okay, uh, but what is, it, what is the intent? To let you know that our Father rules in heaven. The, these nations are like a, 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 a gnat in a bucket to him when he gets ready to make a move and he's your father he watches out for you he warns you he leads you so be strong in him okay let's skip on down to the 19th verse then Daniel whose name was Belteshazzar this was the name given Daniel means God is judge all right, then there's no ifs, ands, or but, maybes. That's just the way it is. God is judge. That's what Daniel means. Belteshazzar is, um, uh, Bel, uh, protect his soul or protect his life, uh, was a stone for one hour. Old Daniel didn't want to answer this vision. And his thoughts troubled him, and the king spake and said, the king, of course, is the king of Babylon, all right? So we're all centered here. Uh, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, 
in the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. That's the king of the Babylon's enemies. We happen to be enemies to the king of Babylon, who is the spirit Messiah, who is Satan. Okay? Verse 20. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth. Now, listen, when something, even a sign and a type, reaches all the way to heaven, something's going to happen. You better get set for it. I said, when something reaches all the way to heaven and to the point that God sends a type this strong, something is about to happen. Well, <laughs> what does that mean? Well, you're a watchman. You watch. Okay? You be on guard. If you've studied God's Word, you know what is to follow. Okay? Verse 21. Whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, chicken in every pot, under which the beast of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. The... Uh, the not the tree being back in the beginning the knowledge of good and evil still the same old boy Satan okay symbolic thereof 22 it is thou O king that art growing and become strong for thy greatness is growing and reacheth unto heaven and thy dominion to the end of the earth and naturally this is when, again, when God acts, okay? And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump and the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, keep it alive, I'm going to use it again. Okay, and let his portion be with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. Seven times usually for a deeper student usually draws one attention to the gap theory, which has to do with the final week, the final seven days of Daniel. All right, chapter nine, uh, bringing this home. And naturally, a type given to it would indicate that last week, that we're getting pretty close, my friend. We're getting pretty close. 24. This is the interpretation, O King, and this is the decree of the Most High. This is what our Father has to say, which has come upon my Lord the King. They shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, till seven times shall come, shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Now, the original Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to that conclusion that God rules, and he accepted God. As I stated in this same fourth chapter, that he being the author thereof with God's guidance, the most, one of the most beautiful prayers in the Bible. He converted. Uh, now, this type, I'm not expecting that. But then we're not to judge man. I know man. But I don't know. We'll wait and see. You won't wait. But uh, I know one thing. If there was ever a man God didn't want, and that's, that's not a very nice thing to say, he has hurt so many people without one indication whatsoever of mercy. It's just, it's just terrible. It's despicable. If God ever picked somebody that makes a good example for Satan, a type, boy, he got him a good one there. He is just really, and right today, why I say that, he's... He is locked in a place, and he's arrogant. He's still giving orders. And some might say, well, that's a twisted mind. Well, he's had that twisted mind for a long time. As far as I'm con a, a man has to have a twisted mind to do what he's done. Got to be something wrong somewhere. Maybe it's, maybe it's possession of the very spirit of Satan. Uh, that would not surprise me. 
26. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. And it was, and um, many more things would happen to it through his grandsons. It's not going to happen this time in the type. Okay. 27. Wherefore, uh, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine inequities, and by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. There is no sign that Nebuchadnezzar ever showed mercy to anyone, unless it was family and hate. I don't know if we should even say he showed mercy to family. What did he do to his son-in-laws? He shot them. And of course, they weren't being real nice to him either. <laughs> they went over to um, Jordan and started spilling the beans. You all know what spilling the beans means. Uh, and, um, and then Saddam sweet-talked the, the girls into bringing the boys back home. And the boy, the day they hit, there was a bill of divorcement waiting. And they were no longer married to Saddam's daughters, and the next day they died. So he's pretty hard on family, too. You know. So just kind of keeping the type and the real thing kind of separate here, because the type is more what you're going to get in the end times. The false messiah. Okay. Verse uh, 29. Time changes things, doesn't it? Nebuchadnezzar accepted the explanation. 29. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. There he was, 55, 57 miles south of Baghdad, and he's in a palace. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon one of the wonders of the world? that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power. Now, where'd God go? And for the honor of my majesty. Now, when a man starts talking like that, you want to get a little distance between you and him because God is just about to smite, <laughs> you know, Nobody builds anything unless God blesses it a little bit, unless they're just an out-and-out -out crook, okay? We've got people that mess people out of life savings and build stuff, all right. But with God's blessings, you build. Otherwise, you're just a crook. And, and or, or you're on an ego trip. And boy, he was on a good end here. I mean, left God totally out of the equation. I wonder how many palaces are tight built. I have palaces on the Tigris. I have palaces on the Euphrates. I have palaces everywhere in my people's star. What a shame. What, you know, how disgusted. It went all the way to heaven. And God was disgusted with it, that he had let this base one be placed in power. But all the time, he's doing it to show you a sign so that you know his word, and you know his word comes to pass as it is written. Verse 31, And while the word was in the king's mouth, while he was still bragging, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The, king, thy, the kingdom is departed from thee. Bam. I mean, God giveth and God taketh away. That's why when God gives you something, you want to think, say thank you. Okay, be nice to Him, and uh, for His blessings, He's He keeps score. Right? Trust me, He keeps score. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And seven times shall pass over thee, exactly seven months. This times can be any type of period, but what is always used to, in relationship with Satan? Moons, months. That's why it was short. his time was shortened to five moons, five months. 
Revelation chapter 9. Until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. That's what God wants people to know. Do you know that that's why God will not let us fight in the battle of Armageddon or Haman Gog? Because he wants the atheist to know, I am God, I am real, and I am here. And I can cut it. That's why he rains down hailstones, 180 pounds, that will take any tank, anywhere, anytime, or anybody. Any shelter, any palace. God just has that way of conquering and saying, I'm your father. You will answer to me. And that's just the way it is. And again, when this thing got so bad and ran so long, 17 times he told the United Nations to <laughs> get out of my life. You're all a bunch of fakes. I got a great thrill from an Iraqi that is in the new government spoke before the United Nations. And he said, shame on you all. Shame on you. You sat here through 17 times and did nothing while he was murdering my people at home. That must have made him feel real good, you know. But truth hurts sometimes. But truth is a good teacher as well. So uh, what goes around comes around, okay? Um, so there he was. And let's go with verse uh, 33. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven. God looking on him, make sure everything's going the way he wants it to, till his hairs were growing like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claw. How many of you saw the picture of him when he stuck his head up? What did his hair look like? He didn't exactly come from the beauty parlor, did he? Do you know what he kept alive on? Candy bars, fruit, and whatever he could grasp. And that's what kept him alive that time. You'll, most of you in your major papers, you'll find a complete report on that today. That's a powerful, powerful type that has come to pass in your generation, the generation of the fig tree. And you want to pay very close attention to it. Isaiah chapter 14. Verse 12, we're going to play with this a little bit. Verse 12 reads, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? We're looking forward even now to the next appearance. Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Lucifer means bright morning star, the fake. Not the true morning star, which is Christ. He's always trying to steal and to rob. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That's where the throne always sit, on Mount Zion, north side. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. I'm going to take his place. Boy, that is high talk, okay? And whoever talks it, in this case it was Satan, Lucifer, it's, it's going to get him where he's supposed to be, ultimately. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee 
shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? And he, as he stuck his hole out of that, as he stuck his head out of that pit, and you saw that poor, miserable wretch saying, I am the president of Iraq and I'm ready to arbitrate. Is this the man that gassed a whole village? Is this the man that built all those castles with the fancy ivory? And he's crawling out like a snake out of the ground? And the snake being symbolizing the type in which he played? Wake up, my friend. You've received a type that is very, very fitting, letting you know the time and the season. Be very careful. Stick to the Word of God and remain focused if you ever did in your life. When you have God with you, no man should cause you to tremble. You understand? Verse 17. They made the world that made this man that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. Well, unfortunately, this type did. Okay, he opened the house of his prisoners and let every one of them go. And we're having we have to hunt them down one by one. Okay. Now, what this has to do with is the final. You with companion Bibles, you know that the Assyrian is one of the names of Satan as Antichrist. Your companion Bible will give you a layout on it. Okay. I want you to go to um, the 14th chapter there. Let's skip all the way down to verse 22. Verse 22, For I will, I will raise up against them, or rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, the remnant, and son and nephew, saith the Lord. Well, boy, in the types, he cut off the sons, didn't he? And there was a nephew with him, do you remember? Wake up, my friends. Watch the word. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, as I have taught, or thought, rather, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so, sh so shall it stand. You can count on it. He's not going to change his mind that I will break the Assyrian in my land. That's, that is the, a, one of the names for Antichrist. Okay, your companion, again, your companion Bible will give you further all the documentation you needed and then some. And upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations whose hand God's our fathers your fathers for the Lord of hosts hath purposed and who shall disannul it do you think you can do you think Saddam could have I don't think so he sure didn't did he nothing can withstand God's hand and his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? That's exactly the way it is, and that's exactly the way it shall be. Now, it often helps you if you um, um, go back to... Uh, Where, where am I here? I, let, I lost my place. Have you ever done that? It's kind of a lonely feeling, isn't it? Especially if you're on national television. 
doesn't bother me a whole lot, okay? Um, my mind is racing. I'm, it helps you to go back to what was happening just before Lucifer appeared, to know what was going on there, and you might get a little peek at what's happening today. Stay with chapter 14, go back all the way to verse 1. What brought this on? What was the condition? What was the sign? How was it going down? Chapter 14, verse 1, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, that's all the tribes, and will be and yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Well, why? Because that's God's house, okay? And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. A captive to what? Do you understand that we're all captives of the Lord Jesus? We are. We consider ourselves servants, do we not? Of course we do. We're all servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. He takes you captive. As a matter of fact, one of the strongest prophecies in the Bible, Revelation chapter, don't turn there, chapter 13, along about verse 11, uh, 12, says that we, those who are taken captive will be taken captive. Those that love the Lord will follow him and serve him. Okay? Three, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou hast was made to serve. He's going to get a monkey off our back. It has to do with the four hidden dynasties. They're going to be gone. Well, what are the four hidden dynasties? False education. False religion. False political process. And uh, false economy. All those what's yours will be yours. What you labor for and grow, you will eat. You know, that was pretty well the way it was in the old days. It's according to who dug the deepest cellar and who grew the most stuff and who worked the hardest cannon. And you made it through the winter pretty good. But you take somebody that would rather lay in the shade, when it come wintertime, they hurt a bunch. Okay. Things are going to be put back to right. Okay. And um, verse 4, listen carefully that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Okay? Don't you let him get next to you, my friends. You'll take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? How did you come to all this ruin? Okay? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, and he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. Nobody's going to help him. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at the, and the cedars of Lebanon, symbolic of our people, the love the Lord, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is coming up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth, it hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations, and they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like us? That's all Satan amounts to, my friend. He holds by lies, powers of deception when he has no power. Let me ask you a question. You think Satan's really powerful? Now, he's nothing to mess with. I don't want to downplay that. But didn't God give even you power over Satan? Have you not read Luke 10? Or rather, Luke 18:10? Where God has power, gave you power over all your enemies, you don't ever have to sweat anything if you're a believer. 
You have power, authority from our Heavenly Father. So you don't have to let Satan rouse you or push you or shove you. And praise God, in this world, things are beginning to fall into place. Things are beginning to take shape. Ultimately, and the outcome will be in Revelation chapter 18. I'm going to go there with just a verse or two, and then I'm going to quit. Revelation chapter 18. This will not be a type. This will be the real thing. As I taught at Fall Fellowship from chapter from ver this chapter 18 from 1 down to about uh, 16 has to do with the four hidden dynasties and how we defeat them and overcome them. Pick it up with that thought and listen to these verses concerning the true king of Babylon which is none other than Satan himself using the types that you have been warned with as the season you are living in. It's exciting my friend. You live in very exciting times. Revelation chapter 18, verse 16. And saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, that's the hour of temptation, we don't find it tempting. So great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster, and all the company and ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city, that great city Babylon, fifty-seven miles south of Baghdad? Now, unfortunately, that's not where this ultimate city of confusion will rest, okay? But when you, you know where the Antichrist stands, you read it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. That's where he chooses to set up his Babylon. Megiddo mean, in the Greek tongue means the gathering place, Hebrew tongue means the gathering place of the crowd. That's where he gathers. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich. All that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. My friends, let me tell you something. There's a type right there in what has happened in the last few months. Do you know the reason that Germany and France and Russia held back? They were doing business with Saddam, big time. Not just little stuff, big time. And France had some weapons that were dated to bring down, shoot down aircraft that they had just very recently acquired some way. Now I'm sure that the governor of France didn't send them there, but somebody had to approve it along the way. And Russia, with trade, with millions, they were hurting for money, and they took all their old scrap tanks and stuff, polished them up, put diesel in the squeaky joints, and and uh, softened them up, and said, "Man, what a fighting machine!" And Saddam went for it. That's <laughs> pop pieces of junk, you know, and. And then they wouldn't take part because there was, I mean, that wasn't just a little, it was billions. So naturally, they didn't want us to find out what the records read in Baghdad as to who had sold what. But now things are beginning to, you know, when you get caught with your trousers on wrong, or some, whatever that saying is. It's embarrassing. It is. And they've been caught. And now, finally, things are really beginning to stack up. But, see, this is like reading tomorrow's newspaper. Okay, that's what I want you to see. 
and a mighty um, twenty. Let's go with verse twenty. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. God has done a lot of avenging here. It's going to get better. Okay. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. That time will come, and it's not that far away. You're living in a generation where things are so exciting and because you see prophecy coming to pass day after day after day. And you are preparing yourself for that time to stand against that false religion that is moving like a locomotive, aided by the four hidden dynasties. Until, do you know something? You want to be very careful. Do you realize that old socialism is working back in like an everyday word in this nation? Do you know what that means? That means. Uh, um, that um, Russia might as well have won. They took us over by politics instead of war. This, that's bad. You can't be free to worship God and listen to people that want to destroy God. That's why the Ninth Circuit Court says, don't you let those little children say the Pledge of Allegiance because it mentions God's name. Well, are you, is anybody in here ashamed of God's name? I would hope not. You're in the wrong place if you are. Okay, but that's a disgrace that we we allow people to gain the office of officials that feel that way. That's where you're at, my friends, and we will be held responsible. So every time there's an election. Do you know what to do? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for your written word. Thank you, Father, for the prophecy. Thank you for these examples that were set back for our admonition, our warning that it was coming. Thank you, Father. We bless you for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Free introductory package. Say, this is something we would like to offer for a one-time gift to all the new folk that study with us. This introductory package gives you a monthly newsletter, which means each month you will receive a newsletter with a Bible study on it. Hey, raising funds? No way. We're not beggars. We're Bible teachers. That's what it consists of. A tape catalog that will give you all the topics that are covered. And the Mark of the Beast tape. What is this Mark of the Beast? Is it really on your forehead? No, Satan's considerably more intelligent than that. It's in your forehead, which is to say, in your mind. Have you been deceived? This is a free offer to you, one time to each new student. Say, find out what's really happening and what the story is on the mark of the beast. And uh, they bring the wrath of God down on their own head. It's a very, it, it's a disease. And um, quite frankly, this is why when I say never ask us a question about a particular religion, individual, or, or an organization, when you begin to criticize and talk, that's kind of gossip, you know? That's kind of judging people. Gossip is kind of judging. It's just not right, okay? If, if a person discusses a person for information's sake or something, there, that's that's not necessarily gossip. Remember, evaluate the word malicious. Okay, malicious gossip is very wrong. It's 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 all right to ask someone if you're thinking about doing business with a certain person as to what do you know about their reputation or something. That's fine. Will from Georgia. Exactly where does the Bible say that Mary conceived Jesus and went to see Elizabeth who was pregnant with John the Baptist? Haven't you ever read it? It's it's the Christmas story. It's how it all happened. Luke chapter one verse begin reading with verse thirty two. And the very questions you've asked, you can read it for yourself from God's word. I'll say it again. Where the conception of Christ took place, 
where she rushed immediately to Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John. Luke chapter 1, begin reading with verse 32. And you will find exactly in the Bible where it is written. Um, you might note while you're at it that Elizabeth, being her cousin, was not of the tribe of Judah. She was a full-blood Levite because she was married to Zacharias, a Levitical priest, which was required. Uh, Pauline from Tennessee, I have a question for you. In Zechariah 8, chapter, in the fourth verse, I understand that we are in spiritual bodies, but will some be old and some young, as it speaks of old men and old women dwelling in the streets of Jerusalem, and in the fifth verse, boys and girls playing in the streets. I wish you would explain. Thanks for letting God use you, and God bless the USA. Well, boy, he blesses the United States of America, and uh, and I'm more than happy to allow him to use me teaching his word. You must realize that in God's word, he teaches a great deal by utilizing figures of speech and analogies. That's to say... Uh, like our people have always been real bad about this. Like we have phrases like, "I'm boy, am I going to raise Cain tonight?" Well, I don't have to explain that to you. You know what that means? I'm raising Cain tonight. Okay, or, boy, they're painting the town red. Well, they don't literally go down and paint the town red. All right, it's just it's um, it's it's um, metaphors, figures of speech. God uses them, and what what it is when. When old people can sit on a porch swing out on their front porch on a street and spend an evening, what does that mean? I mean, there's not any pot shots being taken by gangbangers. You know, you don't have murderers and drive-by shooters running up and down the street. Or you wouldn't have elderly folks. I mean, some of you that live in areas where they have this, do you see old folks sitting out in the street at night? I don't think so. And you certainly don't see little boys and girls playing in the street where there's drive-bys and gangbangers. It's a figure of speech, meaning it is going to be so peaceful there, not that there are old folks, but old folks could sit out there or kids could actually play in the street and not be hurt. It'll be, it's going to be that peaceful at that time okay that's that's what it means not that we will be old or someone else will be old it's it's simply a, a metaphor meaning it's going to be so peaceful there okay uh curtis uh, from maryland please refresh my memory the last two great battles that you've mentioned including armageddon will these battles take place before during the time that Satan is here on earth in his role as Antichrist. Enjoy studying with you. God bless you and your staff. Well, he sure does. Thank you. The battles take place immediately at the end of the false messiah's reign. This is what puts him in in uh, chains, bondage. Okay. Uh, this is what this is where the um, atheist that do not believe in God will know for certain there is a God because he's going to thump their gourds big time. Okay? We're not going to do it. He's not going to accomplish that himself. Actually, we've never uh, witnessed. Armageddon and Haman Gog are the two battles. Armageddon, of course, we read in the great book of Revelation, and Heman Gog we read in the 39th, 38th and 39th chapter of the great book of Ezekiel. Right at the end of this earth, just on the last day of this earth dispensation before the first day of the millennium. All right? Uh, Anne from Mississippi, do you have to go to church to go to heaven? Well, um, Church is a gathering place that is convenient for people supposedly to be able to learn God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. 
and then at Passover and Feast of Tabernacles, certain books of the Bible were read, were read and so forth. But now we can we don't have to have a priest or a preacher for us. We can all read and we can all study because we're educated. You have to remember back in the original days when some rules were set, the people didn't have the word. It had to be read aloud to them so that they could be taught. And it was, I mean, it went on for hours. Okay. That's the way the, the holy days were fulfilled. But it doesn't say anything in John 16, 316. Does it say, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would go to church would not perish but have everlasting life. I don't think that's what it says. And the church isn't even mentioned there. The church is a convenience for studying God's Word if it's a good church. But there's a lot of churches that God's Word isn't taught there. Okay, I'm, and I'm not judging them. You know, and I know. I don't. They know. All right. Uh, so, um, no, Christ is the Savior. And you're very blessed if you have a church that teaches God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Dennis from Indiana. I enjoy studying with you and your TV Bible study, and I wish to order some of your tapes, but I don't know where to start. Do you have a recommendation? Well, if you've ordered our Mark of the Beast tape, you have a recommended list in there for beginners, or I think it's on page three of each monthly letter, you'll have the suggested list for beginners. You think about it. I'm out of time. Hey, you know what? I love you all a lot. Why? Because you enjoy studying our Father's Word in more depth. But most important, God loves you for it. Do you know something? It makes His day. And when you make His day, He's going to make yours. You can count on it. We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, it, staying in His Word is so very, very important. Bless Him. He will always bless you. Most important, hey, you stay in His Word a little bit every day. Every day and it's a Jesus, Yeshua, He is the living Word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas. 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you. The sons of Eli and Samuel, the last two judges of Israel, sinned against